one of the people I learned most from for the book was an uh, amazing man named Professor Earl Miller. He's at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He's one of the leading neuroscientists in the world. Um, I went to go and see him at MIT and he said, got to understand one key fact. You can only really think about one consciously, consciously think about one thing at a time, right? That's it. You can think about one thing at a time. I'm talking to you. I can't think about what am I going to have for lunch, right? Yeah. Can't do it, right? If I start thinking about that, I've lost my ability to think about you. I have to switch back, right? Um, and he said, that's just the fundamental structure of the human brain, which has not changed in 40,000 years. We're not going to get away from that, right? But what's happened is, as the world has sped up and accelerated, we have convinced ourselves we can do more than one thing at a time. So we took a phrase that comes from computing, multitasking, right? Which is a term that was invented for computers. Computers can multitask. They've got more than one processor. So they can do more than one thing at the same time. Mm. We took that term and we applied it to ourselves. But he said, this is an enormous delusion. It, 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 it's, a, it's a fundamental mistake. So it used to be thought by scientists that you could multitask, right? That you can do more than one thing at a time. It feels intuitive, right? You're like, oh yeah, I've, I've done that. I've I've had experiences where we've done that. But what happens when you get people in labs and you say, okay, do these two things at the same time, and they study them, they discover in fact what happens is four, four things happen to you that profoundly degrade your ability to think and pay attention. The first is what's called a, the switch cost effect, right? So say, I, say while I was talking to you, I was, I'm not, don't worry, but say I was glancing at my text messages, right? If I, if I look at you, I glance at my text, you can, you can imagine I could go, oh, it takes a second to glance at your text message, right? If I glance at my text message and look back at you, what happens is my brain has to reconfigure in that moment, right? What was, what was I talking to Tom about again? Where was I then? Yeah. Right? And that is a significant cost in terms of your mental bandwidth, right? So that's the first cost. The second cost is error backtracking. So let's say I do that. Let's say, let's say I'm doing my tax return and I check my texts, right? In the moment in which I go back to my tax return, because my attention has gone off to something else, because a certain amount of my bandwidth has gone somewhere else, um, I start to make mistakes. And then I have to go back and correct those mistakes. So that's another cost, right? Correcting errors. The, the third cost is, is actually to your, to your memory. You, um, you, you, to encode things in your memory takes time, right? Um, and it takes mental energy. And if that energy is spent switching, you just remember less. And the fourth cost is a medium to longer term cost, which is to your creativity. So creativity happens where one of the ways creativity happens is, um, you know, you put together two ideas that have never been put together before, right? Um, you combine ideas in new and interesting ways. And when your brain is freed up, it, when you're mind wandering or you're just thinking, your brain will just run over the things you know, and it will start making connections in interesting ways, right? Um, if your mind is just jammed up, we're constantly switching between tasks. What was I just watching on television? What does this text message say? What am I saying to Tom? What's this other person texting me saying? Oh, what's that message on WhatsApp? What's this thing on Snapchat here? What If you're jammed up with that constant switching, you become significantly less creative over time.